For thousands of years, the traditional owners of this land have lived on the food provided by nature. They have lived and died through countless generations and recorded the pattern of their lives on rock and stringy bark. The gathering of nuts and berries, hunting for meat, and the mythical tales of their ancestors. This is the northeastern tip of Arnhem Land, rich in Aboriginal culture and tradition. Beneath the surface, there lies riches of a different kind. Rich deposits of bauxite, used to make alumina and eventually aluminium. To some of the tribal elders and the artists who recorded their traditional lifestyles, the advent of white culture, and particularly mining, spelled doom for the land and the people who depended on it. It was depicted in their paintings. This one refers directly to what was then seen as the effects of bauxite mining at Go. The artist from Yukala Mission shows the hunter as a skeleton. He is ready with his spears and hunting dog, but there are no animals to hunt. So both of them perish. That was in 1968 when Nabelco was formed by a partnership of Australian and Swiss interests. Together, they invested $320 million, the equivalent of about $1.5 billion today, to launch the biggest mining project in the Northern Territory. Now, in the 1990s, it's an entirely different story. With more than 92 million tons of bauxite ore mined from the site at Gove and a rehabilitation program that has been going since day one, mining and Wadamiri, or the ecosystem as we know it, are living side by side. When Nabelco's team of engineers and miners began their work here, the challenges were enormous. Access to the site by road was impossible. Every piece of metal, from nuts and bolts to heavy girders, had to be brought in by sea. But that was only one of the challenges. A far more complex and lengthy task was the job of completely rehabilitating the land after it had been mined not just to replace the trees, but to see that food systems existed for everything from termites to wannabes, and to ensure that the berries and nuts that once meant survival for a whole population of Aborigines would flourish again. There were no precedents for this work, no reference books or experts with previous experience that could be brought in. This was the first major project of its kind, a commitment to rebuild nature. This formidable task was given to Dieter Hins, an ecologist who has supervised every stage of the program since mining began. It's his job to see that when the land is handed back to the Aboriginal custodians, once mining is completed, it will be virtually as it was. Each year, an area equivalent to that which has been mined is rehabilitated, approximately 125 hectares. Nabelco employs local Aboriginal people to advise and work on the reconstruction process. Planning is always about five years ahead of the mining work. Does that happen next year? Or no, we, uh, I'd say in about another three years before we move on. That. At first sight, the tree felling seems harsh and extravagant. But it's a necessary process for successful rehabilitation. Once cleared, the trees are burned and with the top canopy of vegetation removed, 
the lower story is stimulated by the extra light and moisture. These cleared areas in fact become a nursery for new growth. Then, when a new area has been mined, the hard ironstone floor is ripped by bulldozers along the natural contours. Although the method is costly and time-consuming, it pays off because it allows tree roots to gain purchase amid the broken rock and newly ripped earth, allowing the taller ones to withstand the cyclone force winds, which often batter this region. The topsoil and subsoil from the cleared areas is scooped up and relayed with the topsoil uppermost onto the ripped ironstone bed. It's important that the topsoil is not stockpiled, but with its nutrients, mycorrhizal fungi and seed intact, is scraped up and immediately put in place. This method of replacing the whole growing medium is vital to the regeneration program. Conspicuous by their height are the power poles, still in their original position. But now, after the bauxite has been removed, standing four meters above the rest of the countryside. While trucks rumble past, taking ore to the crusher, the insect world gets on with its own life. A great deal of work has gone into selecting exactly the right plants to regenerate the area. The topsoil may well have seeds germinating, but to ensure the area is fully propagated, seeds are collected for later planting. A team of Aborigines employed by Nabelco has become very closely involved in this process because the vegetation plays such a large part in their culture. For instance, the Wanambi tribe revers the stringy bark, which they call Kadeka. Not only do the plants provide food, but also a basis for many herbal medicines, together with carving and painting materials. On some days, the seed picking becomes a tasting session, and it's not always fruit they're sampling. There's one variety of ants that has the flavor of lemons. This area was replanted about 10 years ago, and already there's a wide variety of plants, insects, and birds. One man who knows the bush intimately is Gambali Narawata. He is a respected Dirake, or master of tribal ceremonies among the Aborigines of Eastern Arnhem Land. He is also an artist, and he has depicted the regeneration process in his work. He knows the importance of providing a balanced system that will support people and animals. Gumbali also knows the traditional methods of using the plants and their size and maturity to calculate the seasons using nature as a calendar. Not only are the trees growing well here, but underground there are yams, a tasty sweet vegetable rather like a sweet yeah, potato. Any in? Oh, yeah. Yep. Sometimes. Sometimes you eat raw. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. 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 Very soft. Mm. Very soft. It's mm. like potatoes when it's cooked. Yes. Hmm? Mm. Mm. Very starchy. But you can see there, there how wet it is. It's really juicy. Mm. Once the seeds are collected, they are carefully cleaned dried and sorted. Notes have already been made about their previous location. Now they will be stored in an air-conditioned shed for future use. Seeding takes place just prior to the wet season, which lasts from December to April. It's important that traditional methods are observed along with ideas gained through more recent experience. Hence the women tramp the seed to give it a good mix 
whilst a single application of superphosphate will be sown simultaneously. A crop of Rhodes grass incorporated in the seed mix binds the soil and gives it protection from erosion. But after about four years, it dwindles and disappears, having done its job. Looking at the birds feeding from the blossom and the termites busily creating their own empire, it's difficult to believe this land was completely cleared and mined less than 12 years ago. As the mining continues into the 21st century, so will the regeneration program. It is an operation that requires patience, dedication, and a considerable financial commitment. But it is working, and there is no greater authority on how well it's working than the people whose ancestors lived here for centuries. And all the tree, like now, you will see this time the tree is growing back to the main site. And all the food, they're coming back. Like you can look now, at the yams in the main site. Mm. So you can try and find plenty of food now? We've been getting our plenty of food now. Mm. For our future lives. Mm. By the time when this mining will be finished, one day mm. the people will go over everywhere. Yeah, getting and collecting. Food to get in the same way like people. Yeah. Just in collecting. Way back mm. every time. Mm. That way. Even stronger than his words are symbols in his own painting. Gone are the skeletal form of the hunter and his dog. In their place are signs of cooperation between the Aboriginal and mining communities. The central point in red is the mined area. From it run the hall roads, passing through land which is once again growing plants, which provide food for hunter and animals alike. And so they all survive. The black and white hands holding the seeds symbolize the collective effort that has brought about the restoration of the living environment. Wanamiri survives. <laughs>